Are you tired of having dongles dangling from your phone all the time? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just use your pre-existing awesome earphones and plug them into something but not have to be physically connected to your phone? Well, check this out. Because in today's video, I'm looking at the Autorect Beam 3 Plus. Let's get it. What's cracking, audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So the All Direct Beam 3 Plus. You know what? I was pretty excited about this one. Very excited indeed, actually, because I do like a good Bluetooth uh, adapter, or I should say Bluetooth amplifier and DAC. My current daily driver is the Shanling UP5. I absolutely love this thing. It goes with me everywhere. Normally I have the leather case on it, but I thought I'd take it off just to have a better size comparison here. So we'll, we'll talk about how they compare later. But here is the Beam 3 Plus, and I'll quickly uh, cover the physical aspects of it. First of all, feels great in the hand. It feels really nice. It looks quite nice in my opinion. It's got matte, this sort of matte glass panel on the front and back. And I love that because it doesn't get fingerprints like these other ones do look at that already it's just covered in them so i wish more brands would do that i think it's a brilliant idea on the top here you've got your usb port for charging the battery and for data transfer because you can use this either with an otg cable with your phone or as a usb dac sound external sound card for your pc or laptop etc then we've got this lovely red switch here which is a beautiful color and this is used to select between bluetooth input and usb input simple and that is a little microphone on the top because you can also use this to make calls on the bottom we've got our io panel and you've basically got a 3.5 millimeter single ended output and a 4.4 millimeter balanced output. On the right side, power button and a gain select button. There's three different gain modes, low, middle, and high. And on this side, you've got your playback controls, play pause, obviously, volume up, volume down, and a long press, like a short press on either of these will change the volume. A long press on the volume, volume up actually goes to the previous track and the long press on the volume down actually goes to the next track so in my opinion those functions are reversed they should be the other way around it just makes more sense to my western brain but you know it's not a big deal you get used to it very quickly so there it is physically really nice now i haven't mentioned the price of this yet the Beam 3 Plus starts at $189, but that is for the black version. If you want the blue version like me, the price jumps up to $199. Now internally, it's got a Qualcomm CSR8675 chip for the Bluetooth, and in terms of the DAC, you get a Sabre ES9281AC. So it's a single DAC unit, when it comes to the output power, you're looking at around 122 milliwatts from the single-ended output and 230 milliwatts from the balanced output. So it's got quite a bit of power on reserve. And as far as battery life goes, look, there, um, there's no specific numbers on the box, apart from the fact that it's got a 1200 milliamp hour battery, but it doesn't specify the battery life. I didn't do any strict testing of the battery, but it seems to be roughly about the same as the UP5 here. So you're looking at around like 12 to 15 hours on low gain and in medium or high gain, that'll drop down to maybe nine or 10 hours. I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that. I just do not have time to do that rigorous testing on the battery but I have been using it for several days and um, yeah, it, like I said, seems roughly about the same. So I would call that pretty good in terms of battery life. There is no app support and the total weight is 69 grams. So it's not too heavy. It's um, obviously nice and pocketable, fits in the palm of my hand. And as far as audio quality goes, well, I think this thing sounds great, very nice. 
It's got heaps of power to drive anything that I used with it. Even my Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro was not an issue for this one, but generally it's for in-ear monitors or earphones, and it'll work with pretty much all of those. So heaps of power. I, I never actually even used medium or high gain, except for with the Bayer Dynamics. I was always on low gain for all my earphones. So there is a lot of power there if you need it. I would say the Beam 3 Plus here has a fairly neutral sound signature with perhaps just a little bit of warmth thrown in. The bass just seems slightly lifted, but it is a nice punchy bass with good definition and speed. And then you've got a nice open spacious mid-range with good instrument separation. Now admittedly, you know, a lot of these aspects are going to depend more on whatever headphones or earphones that you're using that is the case with a lot of DAX and amps and that's what makes them a bit more tricky to review but there are certain things that you pick up like for example I think it is the Beam 3 is slightly warmer than the UP5 here but in terms of staging it's got a nice big sound stage nice and wide with good spacing between instruments instrument placement and imaging is also really nice nice airy treble without any embellishments so as long as your earphones are not sibilant you won't get any sibilance out of this so overall you know it's a it's a great sounding device so i have no gripes whatsoever with the audio quality however there are a couple of things that disappoint me greatly about this especially considering the price First of all, there is no auto power off function, and this is the biggest gripe I have. I think this is madness. Like, for example, the UP5 here, if it's not used, if it's turned on and you've got headphones plugged in or whatever, if you don't play any music for like 15 minutes or whatever, it will automatically turn itself off. Now, I think that is really nice because that means when you go to listen to music again, you're going to have battery power. This one, however, does not turn off under any circumstances. Even if you pull the headphones out, even if you unplug it from a phone, it just sits there and there's a little light here that blinks for pairing mode, you know, if you disconnect it from your phone, that is. And uh, yeah, it'll just do that. And if you if you just forget to turn it off, which which you have to do with a long press of the button, then, yeah, next time you come back, you won't have any battery and you'll be a sad puppy. The other problem I have with this device, now this might be more of a personal preference, but it doesn't have any audible cues. So when you power it on, you do see a light come on there on the front of the device. Now that LED also changes color depending on which gain mode you're in. So now I'm in low gain green, medium gain orange, and high gain red. So you get that. But if you're if you're outdoors on a bright day, that's very difficult to see. And actually now it's it's gone off because there's nothing happening. So it's difficult to know when when the unit is actually powered on. And then the same thing happens when you turn it off. You have to wait, hold the button, hold the button, hold the button. You get nothing. So without any, without being able to hear anything or without any visible flashing or whatever, I don't know if I have turned it off. I think I have because I held down the button for fairly long. But it's just little things like that, little usability features that um, make a difference. Like, for example, with this one, when it turns on, it says power on. And then it gives you little cues. It'll say pairing and connected. And when you turn it off, it'll say power off. And I like that because it means that I don't have to look at it, try and find uh, any, a little LED in the sunshine. I know when it's turned on or it's turned off. Am I complaining a lot? I, I might be. <laughs> I might be. But those two things, I swear, they're just so frustrating to me. It doesn't make any sense. So right now I'm going to do a little quick comparison with the Shanling UP5 here and we'll just talk about some of the differences because there are quite a few. Um, first of all, the UP5 has a dual DAC system. It's got two DACs, uh, ES9219C DAC chips, 
whereas the Beam 3 Plus has a single but a more recent ES9281 AC DAC. In terms of how that affects the audio quality, not very much, but I'm sure a lot of people agree having a dual DAC solution is superior for reducing jitter and things such as that. Now the, the UP5 here has a an OLED screen. I don't know if you'll see it under the light here, but yeah, you can probably just see that. But it's got a screen so you can see at a glance your battery level, your, you know, it's connected to my iPhone, so it shows the AAC codec. It shows your volume level as well. Furthermore, the UP5 here has a car mode. It's got single and dual DAC modes you can switch between. It's got digital filter modes. It's got EQ. And it's got support for both UAC 2.0 and UAC 1.0. Lastly, the Shanling has an additional 2.5 millimeter output, whereas the Beam 3 has only got the two. You're good to go with every single connector or every single plug out there. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about it. And from memory, I believe the UP5 is also has slightly more, a slightly higher power output from the balance connector, probably about 10 milliwatts more, I think, from memory. And for the final nail in the coffin, the, the Shanling is actually cheaper. This one comes in at $170. So this one is $189 for the black, $199 for the blue. So with all that said, I can't really recommend the Beam 3 in light of the competition. Did I mention this one also has app support? It does, and this one does not. Look, it sounds wonderful. If you're looking for an absolutely no-frills device, then uh, you won't be disappointed with the sound. And in fact, I actually prefer, I forgot to mention, I prefer the button layout on the Beam 3 Plus here. I think that is just, first of all, it's beautiful, but I love having these physical playback buttons, whereas everything on the UP5 is done with this tiny little button here so it does have some advantages but overall i mm, i just can't see the value in it anyway i'm going to wrap it up there guys thanks for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up parfam audio file style if you're new to the channel you want to see more content like this in the future go ahead and hit that subscribe button and until next time see you later